Welcome to this session about the science of Sochi. My name is Matthias Karlsson. And I'm Jakob Lagerwald. And we will here today talk about the science of sword chain, or maybe the basics of sword chain, uh, how it's built, how it works, uh, and a little bit how does it work for an arborist. The uh, history of sword chains goes back to the 40s. In the 40s, most of the cutting was made by manual tools. It was two man saws, it was axes, and it was tough work. It's tough work today, but back then it was really tough work. Uh, there were experiments ongoing with, with uh, motorized cutting, but it was severely limited by the cutting equipment. Basically, the classic cross-cut method did not work when the engines increased the speed of the cutting tool. Basically, it built up sawdust, and at each take it would cut less and less. So, back in the 40s, uh, a logger named Joe Cox looked at the woodworms to see how they eased into the wood, creating shavings rather than sawdust. And in the study, he saw that, that the, the claws, the, the hooks of the larva actually took a little bit of a different approach to how it cut. It had a left-right cutting sequence, not going straight at the fiber. Uh, and by this method, he could, the, the, the timber worms, they could ease into the wood uh, more easy. And based on this, actually, he made and designed the first, the first modern saw chain. It has a, a, a right cutter, a left cutter, and it interacts in a similar way as the larva in, in, in going into the timber. And that was the basics, that was the foundation for motorized cutting. And it's basically the same principle that's used today. So Jacob, uh, how is a chain built up and how does it work? Well, yeah, starting off with a little bit of autonomy. Um, we will also cover how it works and, and what to consider when, when pairing power head, uh, saw chain and guide bar. Starting off with the chain's main character, the cutter. Um, as Matthias said, it, uh, the chain carries a, a left and, and right hand cutter. It has a top plate splitting the wood fiber. There's a cutting corner cutting the wood fibers. It has a, a depth gauge, also referred to as rakers or drags. Um, it regulates the, the bite of the chain or the, the, the thickness of the wood chips. There is a gullet in between the, the depth gauge and the cutting edge. Finally, there is a, a, a toe and a heel. The toe rests on top of the guy bar. And uh, while the heel is most often slightly elevated, uh, from, from the guy bar to allow some motion of the cutter, uh, which will, will reduce the vibrations while cutting. So, when the cutter enters the wood, the depth gauge regulates the bite, the uh, cutting corner cuts the wood fiber, the top plate splits the wood fiber, and cutting the wood fiber requires a lot more energy than, than splitting the wood fiber. It's it's the same principle as when, when, when splitting logs with an axe or, or, or carving from a, a wood piece. Trying to cut against the fiber is, is quite difficult, while cutting along the fiber is a lot more, it's a lot easier. Therefore, the, the quality and the, the shape of the, the, the cutting corner will dramatically uh, influence how, how um, uh, influence the, the the cutting performance of, of the saw chain. To have a, 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 a sharp edge, the, the, um, the top plate and the cutting corner has a very, very thin chrome plating. It's uh, actually as thin as one fifth of a human hair. 
Moving on to the other parts, um, the chain carries drive links. Uh, the drive links drives the chain. Um, it it transforms the, the rotation motion from, from the powerhead snow sprocket to the rotating motion of the chain. Uh, some chains carry a guarded drive link. Um, it's a kickback reducing feature and it's placed in front of the cutter. Then there's tie straps or connecting links, connecting the drive links and the cutters. Finally, there's rivets holding all the other parts together. And coming back to the, to the drive links, a, a standard drive link has a, a flat or slightly concave upper surface, uh, while the, the, the guarded drive link has an elevated upper surface. This elevated upper surface uh, acts as an addition to the depth gauge supporting surface, contracting the chain from digging further into the wood, um, um, which and, and will lower the, the reaction forces contrib contributing to a kickback. <coughs> uh, and guarded chains are often seen as the, the, the home home user chain or, or, or only for occasional use, which, which is really unfortunate because the modern uh, drive link does not affect the cutting performance that much. But it can significantly improve the, the, the control uh, when, when using the, the uh, and ease of use when, when using the, the, the tip of the guide bar. Continuing what to consider when pairing then power head, uh, um, saw chain, and, and guide bar. And beginning with the most obvious one, the length. Uh, the length of the chain must match the length of the guide bar. It's measured in, in, uh, by, by drive link count uh, in centimeters or in inches. Then there's the gauge. The gauge is the thickness of the lower part of the drive link fitting into the guide bar groove. Thus, the, the chain has a gauge and the guide bar has a gauge and, and, and they must match. So Jacob here, uh, we, ha we have different gauges. We have a 43, 50, 58, 63 gauge and so on. What is the difference? Is, is it, uh, what does it mean for the user? Well, generally the, the, the gauge follow the, the chain size, uh, basically. However, there are lots of chains uh, uh, which is similar uh, except for the gauge. So they had different gauge, but they are similar uh, elsewise. Um, but, and it's also a common misunderstanding that a 50 gauge cuts faster or is weaker compared to a 58 or 63 gauge. Um, in, in, if, if it does, then it's more likely that that, that that particular chain is of another chain type. And we'll get to that later as well. Good. So continuing with the last fit criterion, the, the, the chain pitch. The chain pitch is the distance between any three consecutive rivets divided by two. Uh, there's, uh, there are uh, mini pitch chains uh, with, with lower cutters and smaller drive links uh, suitable for, for light replication than the, the equivalent standard pitch. Um, and the pitch of the chain must match the pitch of the, the nose pocket, the distance between the teeth on the nose pocket on the guide bar, and uh, the pitch of the drive sprocket on the power head. Thus, all three of them must match. One interesting aspect uh, when it comes to pitch and, 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 and uh, how it's related to tree care, it's, it is its influence on on pruning properties. Um, generally, the, the shorter the pitch, the better the pruning properties. Um, for example, when, when, when using a, a, a smaller nose pocket, having a shorter pitch enables the chain to travel more smoothly around the, the small nose pocket. And, um, and also, uh, when the chain travels around the drive sprocket on the power head, that contributes to a lower noise level, 
uh, which of course if, is of great value when, when using a battery power head where most of the noise emissions actually comes from the cutting equipment. And finally, a, a shorter pitch enables the chain to leave a smoother cutting surface. The shorter the, the, shorter the pitch, the better the pruning performance. Yeah, of course, there are differences when it comes to cutting equipment for logging applications and arborist application. Historically, most of the chainsaws, uh, as well as the chains then, have been developed for the logging industry. And for sure, it's all about cutting in wood. It's all about, about uh, taking down trees to some extent. But there are also key differences when it comes to the application logging versus arborist. When we go for removal in the arborist industry, it's, it's quite close. It's about taking down the tree, bucking, limbing, and so on, maybe in a little bit of a different sequence, but the application is pretty much the same. But there are also, as, as you said here earlier as well, Jacob, it's, there are key differences as well when it comes to pruning, when it comes to nursing the trees and so on. And that, that makes a difference. But to start with, the starting point is actually about safety. Uh, sure, safety is important in all chainsaw applications. I for sure would say that in logging, it's, it's extremely important with, with uh, safety procedures, safety equipment and so on. But in arborist applications, it adds another level, being 20, 30 meters up above ground, hang, hanging in the rope. Uh, in all work for an arborist, it's extremely important in safety. And the chainsaw and the chain properties adds to that as well. Having the right control, you need to be in control of your saw. You can't let the chainsaw drive you and, and uh, uh, how you, uh, you don't want any unexpected uh, things to happen, basically. So control and get that is, is extremely important for the safety part of it. The application as such is also different, for sure. And especially then when you get into the pruning side of it, uh, nursing the tree, uh, where basically the result is not what you take away when you go home, but actually what you leave. And being able to nurse, having the control, having the precision, here the chain plays an important part and what choices you do there. Trigger time, typically a, a, a chainsaw for arborist applications or arborist uses the chainsaw as such shorter time. You don't use it as, as uh, as much as one tool or many. Um, and for a logger, it's the main tool. They use it eight hours per day, five days per week, and it's the main tool. Uh, and, and the trigger time then makes a little bit, how is the chain made? How robust does it actually need to be? Uh, and we can make other things into that then when creating the chain, but also in what choices we make. Uh, and the last one then being the environment, where are we? It's a huge difference when it comes to, for, for, for the chain, it's a huge difference. If we are 10, 10 miles out in the woods in a clean environment versus being next to the highway uh, with a lot of dust, sand going into the bark of a tree and actually damaging uh, the chain. So there are key differences for the chain when you compare a logger and an arborist. And Jacob, talking about the basics of the chain, and if you take that one step further then and into, into the characteristics and, and how does these things affect uh, the, the arborist application? Oh, yes, we will, we will cover three different characteristics of, of saw chains. Um, uh, the cutter profile, the, thing, the, the chain type, and the cutter sequence. And beginning with the cutter profile. Um, the cutter profile is the shape of the cutting corner. Uh, and when choosing a, a cutter profile, you need to consider your sharpening skills and in which application you intend to use the chain. Basically, the, the sharper the cutting corner, the more efficiently the chain can cut through the wood fibers. The trade-off, though, is the stay-sharp properties and the, the sharpening skills or, or, um, required from the user to maintain a, a, that cutting performance. During the years, there have been lots of different types of uh, cutter profiles uh, evolved, uh, though the most common are chisel chains, 
and and semi chisel chains. The chisel chain has a square corner, while the 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 semi chisel chain is slightly rounded. There are cutters with a bigger radius here, called a chipper chain. There are uh, chamfer chisel chains, which are somewhere in, in, in between the chisel and the semi chisel. But again, the most common are chisel and semi chisel. So, semi chisel easier to use and holds its edge longer, while the, the chisel chain cuts faster. But why is that then? Well, a chisel corner only needs to cut every wood fiber once to get through, while the, the seam or chisel chain, it has to cut every wood fiber several times to, to, to get through the same distance. In, in the shown sequence, uh, we have illustrated the, the wood fibers as uh, the horizontal black lines. And um, uh, for every orange dot, uh, the, the cutter had to, to, to cut the wood fiber. On the other hand, the semi chisel chain has a longer uh, cutting corner on which wear and, and damages can be distributed, hence the better stay sharp properties. So uh, when you talk about that and, and the choices here then uh, that we can make, on most larger chainsaws you would actually find today uh, a full chisel cutter, right? Yeah. Why, uh, why is that? Because it sounds like, and, and going back to the environment here, that, that it should be more suitable in many cases to actually have a better stay sharp property than the yeah. extra capacity. Correct. Uh, most of the bigger saws are equipped with the chisel chain. Uh, in fact, most of the 3-8 pitch chains, the bigger chains, are chisel chains. Uh, and, and looking at a smaller, smaller power head such as a 50cc, most of them are equipped with the same chisel chain. And, and there's a history behind it. Uh, looking back in time, uh, most professional loggers were experts in, in maintaining and filing their cutting equipment, uh, enabling that full potential of the chisel chain. Um, and therefore making it the obvious choice. And most professional users, uh, or it's more likely that a professional user uses a, a bigger power head compared to the occasional user, uh, who is more likely to use a smaller power head. And, and that's, that's why it is how it is. However, this this filing know-how, it partly got lost during the advancement of the industry. I mean, loggers learn how to maintain harvester machines instead of their cutting equipment. And, and at the same time, the tree care business, it, it grew a lot. And, and as always, tree care workers had to repurpose tools from harvest forestry, uh, such as the, the big power heads and with it, the, the chisel chain. Not at all suitable for the, the harsh urban environment. Another characteristic is the chain type. Um, a chain type is most often a, 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 a choice of characteristics, but could also or is also a, a choice of, of a, a, or a fit criterion since uh, the chain type is uh, limited by cubic displacement, by engine power or by application. Um, <clears throat> there are two common shade ty chain types. Uh, standard chains and pixel chains. We call them pixel, Oregon calls them narrow curve, and Steve calls them pro chains, but we will refer to them as pixel chains from now on. And beginning with the standard chain, uh, the standard chains, uh, they are tough uh, thanks to thicker, more rigid chain chassis, enabling, um, uh, or uh, and, and they have broader cutters, enabling a wider or broader cutting curve. They are mandatory on bigger power heads um, and, and uh, also suitable for smaller power heads um, when performing tougher in, in tougher applications, uh, such as heavy limbing or, or, or felling, where there's a high risk of bending or pinching your cutting equipment. Looking at the pixel chains, um, they have thinner components, thinner chain chassis, thinner cutters, enabling both lower weight and a more narrow cut. The narrow cut enhances the cutting efficiency and thereby the cutting speed. 
the, the chain type is therefore uh, appreciated by, by users who, who value cutting speed and light weight and low weight over extra durability. And coming back to the misunderstanding regarding 50 gauge and 58 gauge, well, yeah, it's more likely that that 50 gauge, if it does cut faster, it, it's more likely that it's a, a pixel chain, as pixel chains are always combined with a thin gauge as well. But looking at the, the 3 8 pitch segment used on bigger powerheads, because there's no, there's no pixel chains available there, uh, comparing the cutting speed uh, or, um, um, of a, a 50 gauge versus a 63 gauge, there will be no difference because it's only the lower part of the drive link that's, uh, that differ. Uh, the upper part of the chain is still the same. So uh, when you compare then, if, if you put it all together here, larger chains or smaller chains, or what, what should we consider when, when, when we choose the cutting equipment and, and uh, how? Um... Yeah, well, like the bigger the power head, the bigger the chain basically. But, but what you need to consider is in, in what application you intend to use the power head. Because there are most often an alternative of, of cutting equipment. There are different alternatives. The 3 8 segment you can choose between different cutter profiles, semi chisel or chisel. Uh, looking at the smaller segment, 50cc, for example, you can choose between different uh, um, chain types and, and cutter profiles. Um, so, in which application? And of course, you need to, to, to also consider what actually fits your power head. But yeah, they're all alternatives. Bringing us to, to uh, the last characteristic when using a really uh, big powerheads. And, and um, so the last characteristic is, is the cutter sequence and uh, the skipped chain. So performing really deep cuts with, with longer guide bars, that requires a lot of engine power. And the, the chain must, must carry the, the, the wood chips a long distance. Um, out from the, the cutting curve. And eventually the, the chain will get bogged down and dragged due to the amount of chips it's pulling through the, the curve. By reducing the number of cutters, the chip clearing improves and fewer cutters cutting equals less power needed from the power head to, to support the chain. So there's three quite common uh, uh, um, sequences. There are the standard chain uh, with one tie strap in between every cutter. Uh, the most common sequence for length uh, below 28 inch. Then there's the semi-skip sequence. It has two tie straps in between every second cutter. It's a quite rare sequence but appreciated by some users as something in between the, the standard and skip chain. Then there's the, the, uh, the skip chain two tie straps in between every, uh, all the cutters. Um, and the, 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 uh, the most appreciated version for, for, for use above 28 inch. There's actually chains with, with cutters on every position of the chain as well. Thus the, twice the amount of, of, of the standard chain uh, used in, in some parts of the world for cutting example bamboo, but they are uh, quite rare. Yep. And that was the last characteristic. Yeah, so to sum it up and, and, and what you've heard, it's a little bit about the basics, but it's also something that, that in daily work, in daily, daily work life, the choice of your cutting equipment makes a difference. Talking about the chisel versus the, the, the semi-chisel, what does it mean for, for me in the work life? Yeah, if you are in a dirty environment, you could, could choose a different chain. If you use longer bars, larger machines, 28 inch and, and upwards, semi -skip, full skip sequence could be an alternative to, to, to make the chain more effective. Talking about the control and the precision, what do I need to do? Maybe I shouldn't have the most aggressive, pulley, draggy chain, but actually to, to fine tune it so it actually gets less aggressive. And we can make a difference with choosing the right chain and 
that is what we want to contribute with here, to explain a little bit about what is the basics and what choices do we actually have. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you.